Hello, I'm Angelie Velasquez, and welcome to This Week in Review for February 17th, 2012 on Green Earths TV. Project of the Week is the John Thewer Cancer Center at the Hackensack University Medical Center, built in 2011 in Hackensack, New Jersey. This center is a nonprofit teaching and research hospital that has grown to become the largest provider of inpatient and outpatient services in New Jersey. The center would not be possible without the generous $10 million donation by Helena Thurer in memory of her husband John. The new facility offers patients an environment that promotes spiritual as well as physical health and the roof garden is a key component of the hospital's efforts to make the patient experience as pleasant and stress-free as possible. Green grid, green roof modules were installed, as well as a demonstration vegetable garden that allows patients to learn about growing healthy foods while recovering amongst a beautiful scenery. In addition to the walk-through roof terrace garden at the second floor, tranquility meditation rooms and fitness centers are available to help patients and caregivers relax and rejuvenate. And the four-story lobby atrium also boasts a 40-foot high hydroponic living wall with over 30 plant species accompanied by a 24-foot waterfall. In 2001, Hackensack University Medical Center was the first hospital in the nation to adopt completely green cleaning practices. To learn more about the John Thewer Cancer Center at the Hackensack University Medical Center, click on our Project of the Week photo on our homepage. Watch our Green Roofs and Walls of the World Virtual Summit 2011 Episode 10, The Vertical Garden from Nature to Cities, an interview with Patrick Blanc. And find the rest of the videos in this series on our Green Roofs TV page here on GreenRoofs.com or on our Green Roofs TV channel on YouTube. Advertiser Press Release Green Roof Technology releases new podium roof garden assessment. Time lapse video captures complexity of a green roof installation by Living Roofs Inc. Check out our contributing editor columns, Ralph Velasquez's greenwashing follow-up, and George Irwin's latest article, Hydroponic Living Walls, DIY Really? Over at Sky Gardens, Haven, Kears, and Linda have started a new series called Chic Sustainability Watch, Trends, Projects, and People. Make sure to read Haven's first post, Chickens and Urban Agriculture. Read Linda's latest blog posts, Green Roof CEO Vanessa Keiches, named as Female Startup Entrepreneur in Oregon. GreenRoofs.com's This Week in Review on Green Roofs TV for February 3rd and 10th, 2012. And Green Roofs and Walls of the World Virtual Summit 2011, Episode 10, The Vertical Garden from Nature to Cities, an interview with Patrick Blanc. February 22nd through the 24th is NRCA's 125th Annual Convention and International Roofing Expo 2012 in Orlando, Florida. February 23rd is a Green Walls 101, Introduction to Systems and Design in New York, New York. And February 24th through the 25th is the It Takes a Village Collaborations in Good Food and School Gardens Winter Conference in Pleasantville, New Jersey. Mary Catherine O'Connor of the SmartPlanet.com blog says, Streetscaping reduces stormwater runoff, pollutants at utility campus. California's Burbank Water and Power, an electric and water utility campus, has been making some green upgrades to their facilities, including a new electric power plant in 2005, and more recently, five different stormwater management systems, all designed to reduce stormwater runoff. There are planters with drought and storm-tolerant plants diverting stormwater, permeable concrete pavers, and biofilters on the redesigned roof. And the, administration, and the administrative building has its own green roof, which collects about 70% of its rainwater while reducing air pollutants and lowering building temperatures. Also, the Burbank Water and Power Campus has been entered as a pilot site into the Sustainable Sites Initiative, which aims to create voluntary national guidelines and performance benchmarks for sustainable land design, construction, and maintenance practices. 
Laura Mehalek of Medeo Reports Chicago talks about Chicago restaurants' move toward hyper-local food production. She says more and more restaurants in Chicago are producing their own ingredients up on the roof. Restaurant owners are becoming smarter and realizing that converting their urban rooftops to green gardens not only helps to reduce their environmental impact and save them money in the long run, but are also supporting local food production. Business partners Isaac Willever and Daniel Greenwald are planning to build the largest rooftop garden in the Midwest atop their restaurant for now being called the Local Root at about 20,000 square feet, scheduled for an April opening. The Bleeding Heart Bakery and Cafe in Westtown is another restaurant hoping to open a green roof this spring and patrons there will be able to dine on the rooftop which offers a new and beautiful dining experience. We all know the many benefits green roofs provide, but added benefits for restaurant buildings are the contributions they make toward increasing local food production, which is great news for business owners and their guests alike. To learn more about these stories and new ones posted daily, go to our In the News or News Link section of our website. Send us your green articles, videos, and images to editor at greenroofs.com and share your green roof or green oil info with the world. Make sure to keep up with everything GreenRoofs.com by following us on Twitter, liking us on Facebook, being a member of our network on LinkedIn, and subscribing to our Green Roofs TV channel on YouTube. This has been This Week in Review for February 17th, 2012 on Green Roofs TV. I'm Angelie Velasquez, and I'll see you next week. This week's episode is sponsored by the Green Roof Directory, brought to you by GreenRoofs.com.